In this video, I'm going to talk about all the wonderful bits and bobs you can get to enhance your games. Hello, I'm Peter Gifford and this is the Esoteric Order of Gamers. Welcome! I'm going to talk today about fantastic things that you can get and collect in your games room that you'll find really, really useful for enhancing your games. Now, you may have noticed that the motto of the Esoteric Order of Gamers is Labor Lucem Meliorat, and that means toil makes play better. So you may have guessed from that motto that I really enjoy enhancing my games. I love building inserts, phone call inserts for the boxes. I love painting the miniatures. I like sometimes replacing the counters that came with the game, or in fact, redesigning all of the unit cards of a tabletop miniatures game. It's insane. But I think that games are lovely objects and everything that makes them more beautiful makes them more immersive and the play experience more enjoyable. So to that end, I have something here that you may find interesting. And they are these. These are the kind of things you'll find at a hardware store to hold nails and screws and stuff like that. And I've got them here and they're full of things like miniature bases, dice, counters from old games, bits of cardboard and wood, dry transfers, all kinds of things that I use all the time to enhance my games, and I found this incredibly useful. So I'm going to show you through these drawers and some of the things that I've collected, and I think you'll find some of them very useful yourself, and you'll want to go out and get some. I'm also going to show you some of the other things that I've collected and I keep here in my game studio, so I can enhance a game at a moment's notice. So let's get into it. Oh, before I go on, I just want to mention my Patreon channel. It's for people who want to support the Esoteric Order of Gamers that's been going for 10 years now, and I've been creating content all that time, videos and hundreds and hundreds of rule summaries and reference sheets. My wonderful Patreon backers are a great bunch of people, really helpful, really generous, and we've got a good community on our Discord channel as well. There's a link to it on the homepage of my website, and I'll link to it in the show notes. Your monetary support is absolutely crucial to keeping the ERG going. I couldn't do it without you, so please consider joining up. Right, let's have a look at what we've got here. In the left-hand box, we have mostly um, pieces and counters and components and bits and bobs. Well, that's not a very good description, is it? So we have here some old counters that I've used for various games. These came from War Machine originally. Uh, some metal coins, always handy for all types of games, especially pirate games. Uh, some gems, they can be used for any game, as you know. These are some old sort of... Well, I don't know, I used to use these for the Call of Cthulhu collectible game, uh, card game, and uh, I haven't used them since, but they may come in handy in the future. This is just a collection of cardboard bits and pieces. May come in handy for something, even prototyping games as well. And here's some general plastic pieces from old games and cheap toy-like games. And, you know, this kind of thing could be quite handy. You might have a game that it's appropriate to have a little step pyramid like this or uh, some kind of stone wall type marker like this. It's amazing how many of these you can collect over the years. Over here, these are offcuts from MDF boards and they can be very handy indeed as bases and, uh, well, all kinds of things really. I don't know where I got these, but they're little square uh, cross markers, uh, handy as markers in all kinds of games, especially tabletop miniatures games. These are some metal washers, which uh, I probably bought to uh, uh, weigh down some miniatures with large bases, but didn't use. Um, plastic bases. I've got a collection of these. Sometimes I rebase miniatures on clear plastic acrylic bases. Uh, rubber bands, dry erase markers, always handy. And then we get into all kinds of random bits and bobs here. Let's speed up the process a bit. We've got thumbtacks and things here. We start getting into bases. I've got all different types of bases. Uh, these are bases where you can actually slot in a counter. So they're really good for making a counter go uh, vertical instead of flat. And we've even got some clear ones here, which I picked up from somewhere as well. Um, all kinds of things here. You're probably wondering why I have these in here. Well, we've got a cat that takes medication. It's not because I take drugs or anything. That's from the cat. Let's make that clear. In the next row, you can see a whole lot of plastic bases um, from uh, little 
thin flat ones to right up to all different sizes. We can see ones here. Some of them have already been textured. Uh, a lot of these came from the AT43 uh, miniatures for that old Rackham game, which I replaced with bases. So there's a lot from there. In the row below, there's mostly square bases. Not many games have square bases these days, but these are probably left over from old Warhammer miniatures and things like that. Uh, there's some Dystopian Wars bases here and clear flying stands. They could be used for all kinds of basing needs. Then we're into the larger drawers, which are very handy. And here's where I keep all kinds of, of these transfers for miniatures. Some of these come from very old models, some of them more recent Warhammer ones. And these are the kind of things you can pick up in, in old games. I think this was the original edition of uh, Game of Thrones came with these pieces. And there's some old miniatures and things in here as well. These things came from an old game about, well, the labyrinth, as you can see, ancient Greek kind of game. I'm sure that'll come in handy one day. And there's a whole heap of other sort of hero bases, uh, torso guys as well, which could be used for something. Why throw them away? Crazy. Now, this is something that I use all the time, and it's a turn tracker. Uh, this one was made by Gale Force 9, I believe. It's got its logo on it, and uh, it's got 1 to 8 marked on the base and a little arrow, so you can move it around to mark your turns. I use this all the time. I must paint it. Um, and there's a few other kind of wooden markers here as well for various things, and a whole lot of other wooden pieces which you could use for all kinds of things. In this row we've got some larger bases that only fit in here, and a whole lot of old uh, counters which we used. I think they were made for Warhammer 40,000, but they may be handy for various things. Uh, they're the templates for the Drowned Earth, and uh, also a whole bunch of cardboard pieces. Could, could be handy for something. And then finally in the bottom drawer here, this is all um, old Man of War, which is the naval miniatures game by Games Workshop that came out many, many years ago now. And I've got a whole lot of uh, flags and things for that and masts and stuff. So when I get around to doing some of those ships that I never finished, I'll use those. Again, more pieces of MDF and wooden counters from various things. Uh, I use these round MDF markers uh, I've got these cut, especially for AT43 markers. I'll use those for something in the future. And these are sort of strange round black objects, which may come in handy. And various plastic gubbins. Who knows? Okay then, let's head over to this drawer. And this is mostly dice at the top here, but some counters as well. So some very handy counters though that I use all the time. These are some leftover star counters from uh, Monster Lands. You can imagine how many games they would be handy in. They're wooden, so very nice. Um, these are some nice markers. The cardboard ones are from the Lord of the Rings Living Card Game. I had some spares, and I think I picked these ones up. A lot of these counters come from a company called Lit Litco, or Lit is it Litco? Yeah, I'll put a link to it in the show notes. And they have lovely things like these little blip counters. I mean, how handy are those? Those I use those a lot. Now, these very general counters are super handy, and again, use these a lot. These are great little cubes for sort of keeping track of action points and things like that. Um, of course, you've got some larger red ones, which are invaluable for keeping track of wounds. And then these two types of counters came from um, Simon Games, and uh, they are these classic little tentacle markers and these heart markers. So these are used all the time for keeping track of wounds in tabletop miniatures games and these are really good for keeping track of special effects. So I think I probably use these two types of counters more than anything else in this collection. The next draw down, a lot of these glass uh, lozenges, which are very handy, of different colours. Uh, I use those for all kinds of things. We've got some very nice uh, little explosion markers here. Again, they're probably from Litco. And then we start getting into dice. Now, you can never have too many dice for games, and uh, different colours are really good, so you can keep track of special effects when you're rolling for dice. You might roll, you know, special dice for your leader's uh, combat roll and stuff like that. So here are some D10 ones, which um, I especially use for Wrath of Kings tabletop miniatures game. And of course, here we have the dice sorted by type, 4, 6, 8... Uh, 10, 12, and 20-sided dice. Some of these are absolutely ancient. This one here is my first D20. I played my first games of Dungeons and Dragons back in 78, 79 with this dice. It's, as you can see, it's seen a lot of use. Uh, pretty fantastic dice here. And I've got some of these other ones came from the original uh, Dungeons and Dragons basic set. 
fantastic. Very, very nice to still have those. Of course, heaps of D6s, you can see. There's a few here left of the Esoteric Order of Gamers Mystery Dice. Um, I made some of these and gave them to some special patrons way back in the day. I may, may make another batch because you can see I haven't got too many left. But they have the mystery symbol, the question mark on the uh, six-numbered side. And uh, uh, just a fun little treat. If anyone's interested in getting some of those, um, I will look into making some more of them. More D6s, some special Warhammer dice. These are strange dice uh, for Dungeon Crawl Classics. They come in all kinds of different um, counts, including a D30. Look at that. Not something you use very often, but there you go. Some strange special dice from all over the place in here, which I may use again. And another row of D6s. Look, there's an empty tray. What will I put in there? There's actually something empty. That's exciting. Uh, these dice are Rackham dice, and these came with Confrontation and AT43 because they have the Rackham symbol on the D6 side. Now, down into the big trays. You can never have enough of fire and smoke markers. These are some really nice smoke ones, and we've got some straight-up fire ones here as well. And not just for tabletop miniatures games, but for board games as well, when they have fire effects. Um, we've got some laser pointers here, which are good, and a few other bits and bobs there. Um, this was from some pirate game toy or something. Uh, always good to have a compass rose with a spinner on it. <laughs> and then all kinds of bits in here. There's timers and things like that. And a couple of very vintage uh, badges from the early days of Warhammer. I bathed in blood at Orcs Drift and Lichmaster, dead good. They're from the very early first edition Warhammer campaigns. Don't know where I got those back in the day. Down the bottom here I have heaps of these clear markers. These are very handy for all kinds of things as you can imagine. Card trays. These are the card trays that came with Memoir 44 and I don't know how I managed to get so many of them but they're still handy to this day. You can get a few of these and they clip together in a row and they can keep small cards for um, uh, keeping them vertical so you, only you can see them and your opponent can't. So I use those all the time. And these are some wooden pieces and the cards from an old game called Hammer of the Scots. Uh, one day I intend to make my own copy of that. I started making it and I never got around to finishing it. Here we are down at the bottom tray. All kinds of bits and bobs here. Mostly Lego pieces, which I picked up somewhere along. An old um, thing tracker from Lord of the Rings living card game. But even Lego pieces could be handy now and again. Here I've got a whole bunch of these plastic stands, which you can put counters into. Um, I don't know what these are, but... They may come in handy. And finally, a couple more tape measures. These large translucent blue markers and a Star Wars spaceship. Now, of course, we all need counters and markers in games. So it's really good to have some things to store them in on the game table. Now, I found these very useful indeed. I got these from a homeware store and they're probably used for keeping nibblies during parties, but they're also really handy for counters. And the reason is they have these curved surfaces inside. So it's very easy to pick up counters. There's no uh, corners where they can get stuck. So very useful indeed. Similarly, I bought a whole bunch of these containers, which again have a lovely curved surface inside. So you can get these from homeware stores and specialty stores, and uh, they'll always be handy. I bring these out almost every time I play a game. If you're a tabletop miniatures game player, then of course you'll need tape measures. Now these ones are particularly good because they're so small. They're actually Stanley ones. They're called Buddy. I don't know if you can still get them because I got them many, many years ago and I've used them ever since. They go in a fist like that and they're very easy to use with a nice thin tape measure that can curve around. Super, super handy and I use these all the time. Here's something for those of you that paint and store miniatures. Oven trays. Now, as you can see, I keep work in progress on these oven trays and I also use them to transport miniatures around the place. I'll show you. As you can see, they stack really nicely. They're just normal metal oven trays, quite cheap. But of course, because they're metal and I magnetize all my miniatures, and I've got other videos I'll link to in the show notes that show you how to do that. When I go over to my drawers of miniatures, I can take them out whatever armies I'm playing with or miniatures I'm using during a game. And I can place them on these trays and move them about. The miniatures will be safe and they won't fall or do anything like that. They're very handy for transporting them around. Also, four miniatures that are a work in progress. So I'll keep uh, a batch of miniatures here that I want to paint and it's very easy to move them around the house. Super handy. 
Now, of course, we all use dice in games all the time, so a dice rolling surface is very good. Um, it stops you rolling your dice and having them go off into the shag pile and you never see them again. So this one I found very handy over the years. I bought this with a deluxe Yahtzee game, and it's a fantastic big surface, especially good for tabletop miniatures games, but for any game with dice. You can store your dice in the wells on either side here and then roll them in the middle, and they won't go flying across the table. Um, for smaller amounts of dice, you can use something like this, a little dice rolling tray. This one came with the League of Dungeoneers, a recent game, and of course there are many, many variations on this type of uh, dice rolling tray, and they're very easy to store because if you unclick them, they lie flat. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this look at all the many bits and bobs and extra stuff that I keep to enhance my games. The wonderful thing about playing games, they're not just games, they're a hobby. And if you get into that side of the whole gaming thing, you'll find there's so many opportunities for making your games look and play better. I hope this has given you some tips. Thanks very much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.